what's up guys? We are gonna get started on installing this air to air intercooler. First thing we're gonna do, uh, mainly tonight, is we're gonna try to rip all of this stuff off. Um, we're talking about getting the intake off, getting kind of this elbow off, um, kind of looking at how are we gonna spin this blower, and maybe even tackling the front bumper. So we're gonna start disassembling. I'm gonna do a time lapse on that. And then after that, um, I'm probably gonna go into depth a little bit about how I modified this air to air kit to make it work for what I'm gonna do um, and really to get the good power gains out of it. Um, and you can see if that's something you wanna do. Let's get rolling. Since you probably couldn't see, there was a couple sneaky peeps up there that was making it a pain to get the fender lining out. Um, one was this, push connect, and there was one at the top. They blended in really well with the fender liner. Um, they're also quarter turn ones, so you gotta kinda have to hold it, take a Phillips head, quarter turn it, that'll pull them out, and then get two screwdrivers in there and pry them out. Now we're gonna focus kinda on the corner here to get the corner of the bumper off, and then also some of the connectors um, where the body harness needs to come across, away from the blinker and the running lights and such. Um, and then that'll be complete this side. Do the same for the next side. So the next step here is to rotate the volute on the supercharger. What you need it to do is instead of pointing towards the throttle body to point kind of straight down or maybe even a little bit towards the driver's side. What Paxton recommends is to take the whole head unit off, set it flat on a table, loosen these screws, Let's see if I can zoom in on them. These screws right here, one here, there's one down here, it holds kind of this C-shaped almost bracket, which pinches the volute to the case. You'll find three sets of two. So two here, there'll be two on the other side and two on the bottom. What I'm gonna try to do is take this modified Allen key that I've ground off the front and sneak it in to here, just like this. This will give me plenty of room to be able to back all these screws out, loosen them up, and then just see if I can get the volute to turn freely. If it doesn't turn freely, I'm gonna pull it all off just so I can see what's going on with it. I'm not sure if you can tell, but what I'm kind of doing, let's see if I can bring some light on this, is I'm shuffling the brackets and only taking off the ones I need. I'm loosening the bolts just enough for the volute to be able to spin um, and for it to be able to clean, clear the hose on the bottom for draining the oil. Um, so notice I put this bracket back on just so that, that volute doesn't fall off and damage the impeller. What I'm thinking about doing is I'm going to put that bracket back on the bottom, but I'm going to leave it relatively loose so that I can kind of fit up the charge piping and then snug it down once I'm ready and I feel like the charge piping is where it needs to go. Sorry guys, it appears my battery died 
Um, as you can see, um, I don't know how much you saw, but the inner core is in place. You can see how the bracket sits in there. What I ended up having to do, take out the factory bolts on this side, and they give you some bolts to put through with some nuts, some split washers. That's how you secure this bracket. Then you use the same nuts and bolts to secure this. Um, in a separate bag, they include with some threaded spacers, looks like in case you had your own inner cooler, um, some more quarter 20 bolts. Those will go across the top to secure it. And then I did the same thing on the other side. On the bottom, it's kind of a trick. I did the bottom last so that the I knew everything was in line and the top was secure. The bottom, you use this pre-existing bolt right here. Kind of had to bend the bracket a little bit so that it wouldn't touch there. And then they did not include hardware for this. I had to get my own hardware for the bottom. Along the bottom of the inner cooler, it's the same quarter 20s as the top. And on the other side, you can see I'm using a similar bolt. And then there's the bracket, and it's kind of tapering off in that fashion. After you're done doing all this, just really make sure that the intercooler itself, like if it was going down the road, isn't gonna bang or bump on anything. Some of the AC lines in the back, kind of like that. Try to bend those so it doesn't bang like that. And after that, move on to the piping. So the next thing we're gonna focus on is trying to get the hot side piping on. As you can see, this is where I started my modifications. Uh, the original kit doesn't include a blow-off valve that vents to atmosphere for a blow-through application. They use a couple ports for recirculation and using a factory recirculatory valve. So I put on this ON3 blow-off valve. I had a buddy weld it up. Um, and then what I did is I used a tile Q and I got the lightest spring I could for the tile Q and I put it in there. So I'm really hoping that this, this looks like a knockoff from the tile Q. Um, I'm hoping that that spring functions well and I'll let you know uh, once I get the car running. If it doesn't work, I'll probably have to cut some coils. Um, and then this is the other pipe, I didn't modify that. So uh, let's get to trying to fit that up inside the car. So I finished getting the hot side on. As you can see, the pipe is kind of pushed between some coolant lines and also sneaks past the crank pulley down there <clears throat> and the oil filter. I got the this boot on first, tighten up the blower so it wouldn't move around. It's pretty well pointing straight down. Then I was able to, once that was in there, sneak the pipe up from the bottom and push it into the rubber boot um, without having to manipulate the boot afterwards. Here's the side with the blow-off valve going into the intercooler. As you can see, it runs below the sway bar and it comes into a straight coupler to go up in there. I'll show you what it looks like and what bolt you have to use and what bracket you have to use. So down here you can see the fit, you can see the crank pulley, you can see the oil filter, and you can see the bracket and what way it is pointed up. There is a bolt right there that you have to use. You can see the nut. They do not provide a nut. It's 10 millimeter outside. Um, I'll put in the description what the actual thread pitch is. It's kind of a tight squeezer.
Also, I forgot to mention, these are some of the modifications I made to the cast piece. I put a plug in here. It's a press fit. You could have a sloppier one and have somebody weld it in. And I also epoxied it. And then I put a plug in here with some sealant. And then I also put a MAF flange here. And a buddy weld that on. This is so that I can get accurate intake air temperatures, post intercooler, so that it corrects for the timing based on that air and not the ambient air. I also put, you probably won't be able to see it. I put an air straightener in there to try to get a cleaner math signal. I'm going to try to give you an idea of how I did this. So you can see the pipe. You can see my math. See how it's been straight over. And then the placement of this 45 down there is very critical. You can see kind of the angle of that pipe. I'm clearing everything. You see I'm barely clearing the AC condenser. Got this up here. No, I've got a full racing manifold. So it kind of pushes it out, um, makes that not fit quite as nice. Um, if you had a factory manifold, I'm sure you'd be fine. And here's all the piping. This bracket is a lot easier than the other side. If you got the other side, you won't miss this, but you need the same size nut as the other side. It wasn't included. So after a good initial first startup, I ended up putting my front bumper back on. That's pretty much the reverse of how you took it off. The bottom bracket's a little tight. Um, it kind of touches the bottom of the plastic bumper, but that shouldn't cause any knock issues. You can see I reused the Paxton intake for now. I didn't use um, the CX Racing one. All I had to do was there was a port for the recirculation valve on the bottom of this. I went to the local hardware store, got a plastic three quarter MPT plug, put it in there, Got rid of my MAF housing, put the filter on it. After the idle log, my tuner manual said, take it for a short drive. On a short drive, I noticed that my lightest tile spring was still closing at about eight to seven inches. So I'm gonna try to snip a couple coils off that, take it for a drive and see if it helps. That's what I'm gonna do now.
there you go guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the install. Hopefully it helped you. Hopefully you can see my struggles and go from there. Um, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to either shoot me a private message or put a comment down below. Um, hopefully it helped you out. Have a good one.